Hello and welcome back to another video. We are going to be looking at Stan Hansen from the Powertown Wrestling Ultras Series 1. And Stan Hansen is number 5. So we looked at Bruiser Brody, who was number 6. Uh, I guess we'll just look at them uh, backwards for now, on just because that's kind of the pattern we got going on. Uh, I'll make this one a little quicker than my Bruiser Brody video, just because I was taking a look at the packaging and everything. We're obviously still going to do that, but I'll make it a little quicker for you all. All right, so you can see Stan Hansen on the front. Beautiful portrait of the figure, or at least a render of the figure. Very, very nice. You have the Lo Power Town logo down at the bottom. Let's try to refocus there down at the bottom very very nice as well you can see the plastic window where we have stan hansen sitting in there very nice and of course the pwf world tag team championship belt is displayed right here so look on the side we have premium collectibles stan hansen power town wrestling and all his accessories down here on the back we have a look at the other figures in the series uh, as well as a little detailing on what he Comes with a uh, 7-inch scale, of course, should fit in nicely with your other figures. Another look at him on the side there. Um, top, not much to say. Just Stan Hansen, Power Town Wrestling. Bottom, just some legal stuff. So, again, you can open up this flap here. I didn't mention it before, but it is actually a magnet. It's not like a Velcro piece like uh, NECA toys. So, uh, very interesting and I think a lot cooler actually. It's more seamless that uh, this opens up and closes with the magnets. Um, again, series one at the top. We have some photos uh, and images of Stan Hansen on this flap and I'll read this for you. I'm not sure how legible this is on the camera. <clears throat> For almost 30 years, Stan Hansen was one of professional wrestling's roughest and toughest talents, wielding his signature lariat and cowbell. Adorned with his cowboy hat, leather vest, and chaps, Hansen was a force inside the ring. Standing uh, 6'4", 321 pounds, Stan Hansen was a rough Texan with a brutality, a brutally stiff clothesline, the lariat, with an overwhelming frame. Hansen displayed a brawling ability mixed with high-impact technique. Debuting in 1973, Hansen quickly made his way through the Tri-State Territory, arriving at the Worldwide Res Wrestling Federation, where he would challenge the reigning champion Bruno San Martino in historic fashion. Hansen would take on San Martino in Madison Square Garden, where the legend of the Lariat gained its lore, breaking the neck of San Martino. Hansen traveled to New Japan Pro Wrestling in the late 1970s and quickly became a top heel. Working between New Japan Pro Wrestling and All Japan Pro Wrestling, Hansen excelled in singles and tag team competition. On April 25th, 1984, Stan Hansen and Bruiser Brody captured the All Japan Pro Wrestling Pacific Wrestling Federation World Tag Team Championship, defeating Dory Funk Jr. and Giant Baba. A four-time Triple Crown heavyweight champion, uh, Hansen was a main event championship competitor and world-traveled superstar. Although Stan Hansen has hung up his wrestling boots, his near 30-year career has left a profound impact on the sport of wrestling. Very, very nice write-up. Uh, just like before, I have opened him just to articulate him a little bit. I haven't really done more outside of that, so this is mostly a blind unboxing. Uh, but I'm going to give you my review of Stan Hansen as soon as I get him out. Uh, we're going to move the box over to the side. I noticed there were some focusing issues in the prior video, so I'm going to just leave the figure out like this. Now, uh, again, uh, I really love the tray because it is not too restrictive. I can just pop this off nice and easily. You can see the accessories are not uh, jammed between any piece of plastic. I can get them out nice and easily. Uh, that being said, we can grab Sam Hansen just like that. And I gotta say, just like Brody, he looks awesome. He looks so, so good. I love the clothes he has. Again, just a soft rubber material. Very, very nice. There he is. Ooh, keep dropping him. That's one thing I notice about these guys so far is that they don't really stand the best. You'll need to pose them in certain ways to make sure they don't fall 
on their face and take a shelf dive as we discovered before with Bruiser Brody. There are no peg holes for these guys, so you can't use a stand on them, unfortunately. But there's Stan Hansen looking very, very cool. We'll take a closer look at him in a minute, but I want to get out the accessories, of course. Extra hand, we got him rocking the horns. Very nice. We'll leave that to the side. We have his cowbell. Very nice, and we can, of course, attach that to this rope he has here, or you can do whatever you want with the rope, really, if you want him to be, I don't know, hog-tying someone in the ring. Uh, but a very, very nice accessory. This is like like a real string, real material. It's not plastic, so very, very high-quality piece. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a sec. And, of course, we saw the same exact title with Bruiser Brody. It is the Tag Team Championship uh, and it will not focus. Unfortunately, again, I might have to pull some camera magic so you can see it. Very, very nice. We'll leave that there. And the most important accessory is cowboy hat. So again, very, very nice accessories. We'll move the plastic to the side, bring in Stan Hansen for you all. So here he is, Stan Hansen. I have to say the likeness I think is pretty dang good like the other figures in the wave i guess we'll start with detail work our way down so uh or you know i'll start with art articulation i think that's what i started with in the uh, bruiser birdie review so again ball joint on the head you can't really get him to tilt his head much but you can get it to turn left right uh down quite a bit uh and he struggles to look up he really cannot look up at all but that is all right uh his arms are on Again, a ball joint, so we can move his arm up, or not a ball joint, but uh, like a socket joint, very similar to what you'd have with Mattel. His biceps can swivel, uh, and just like Brody, he has the pinned elbow joints that can bend mostly that far. Again, not very far, but also not terrible as well, and the same articulation with uh, the hands. Uh, they're on a ball joint uh, and a hinge, so you can twist the hands in any direction, and he has a little bit of a uh, wrist motion in there, which actually looks very, very nice. Uh, again, he has that kind of diaphragm or torso articulation in the uh, torso, obviously. Uh, again, it's not the greatest. It's not like the Ultimate Edition figures. I'm sure uh, the Ultimate Edition figures, however, have a lot of... Um, uh, consistency issues between different figures but as you can see I can move it back somewhat uh, the waist joint is kind of doing all the work for him and he can bend slightly forward uh, but he can bend back a lot combined with this waist joint again very similar to uh, I believe Jazzware figures have that same kind of uh, articulation in the waist so that's very nice uh, in the legs same articulation with Bruiser Brody. Uh, what I might do actually is remove all the uh, accessory clothing real quick. All right, so there's Dan Hansen without the accessory clothes. We're, we're going to talk about those in a little bit. But again, just like Bruiser Brody, he can get his leg very far out like that. He can lift it a decent amount. Like the elbows, he has a single pin uh, joint on the knee. Then, of course, just like uh, Bruiser Brody, his boots are kind of like on some type of like ball joint up on halfway through the uh, calf or the shin. And, of course, similar to a Elite, he has kind of like a ball and hinge uh, joint right here. Uh, one thing to note in my last video, I said that Bruiser Brody only had a hinge in the feet, but uh, just went back and checked, and he does have the same articulation that Stan Hansen has Moving back up top for detail, you can see, again, likeness is very, very nice. The musculature is so good on him. He looks very, very accurate, in my opinion. Uh, his hair, just like Bruiser Brody's, uh, not just a plain, solid color. There's a lot of brush work in there. You can see there's lighter browns at the top, darker browns kind of mixed in between there. Very, very nicely done. Uh, again, matte finish, very nice. The elbow pad, the knee pads and the trunks all look very well done the trunks again i don't believe is just a plain solid black there is some uh color in there as well it looks very very nice um 
just everything about these figures looks super, super good. Uh, one thing to note about Stan Hansen's boots is that they are reflective, way more reflective than Bruiser Birdie's. So that is very, very neat and a very nice detail to have. All right, so we're going to take a look at Stan Hansen with his accessories now. I want to say one thing about these uh, I don't know what you would exactly call them, the cowboy pants, right? Uh, these were extremely hard to get off. Um, I'm not sure what the exact correct way to get them off is. Uh, I would like to display him with these on, but just for uh, the reason why I don't want to rip the rubber, because as you can see, uh, it started to stretch out quite a bit. I just don't want these to tear, so I'm just going to leave these separate um, until I find a more... Uh, proficient way to remove them and put them on all i did was kind of pull them off like they were a real pair of pants maybe there's some trick i'm missing or something i can remove from him but until then i'm just going to kind of leave, leave these off for now hey i'm actually filming this part uh post review i'm just going to insert it into the video uh so update i was able to get the pants back on and uh honestly i think this might be one of the more problematic parts of this figure now unless someone's smarter than me and knows how to really uh work the figure i'd say these pants are extremely difficult to remove and put back on so much so that i've almost torn uh this little strap right by his like crotch area it is uh you can't really see it from here but underneath on the back side of it it is starting to tear a little bit so again like i said in the main video i'm not going to be removing them until i find like a safer way to remove them and put them back on uh i tried removing the boots that kind of helped but still once you get to around the uh, upper legs is where it starts to get difficult. So uh, unless there is a specific way you need to do it, I'm not really sure. Uh, the upper legs, if they can be removed, I really have no idea that probably would be the best way to do it if that is possible. So uh, kind of unfortunate that that kind of happened, but something I, you all should probably be aware of once you get Stan Hansen. Uh, to put the jacket on, very similar to Bruiser Birdie's vest, all you're going to do is push these arms back, or this is how I do it at least. One thing to note too, Stan Hansen's uh, shoulders seem a lot more stiffer than Brody's. That really isn't a problem, uh, just something to note, at least on my version. And you can get them in the vest just like that. Very, very cool. So we'll leave that on for the rest of the review. Now let's take a look at his other accessories that we can put on him. Uh, we will take the championship belt and we will put that on him like this. It's very important that you put the cowboy hat on him as well. That looks awesome, just like that. Then we'll take off his one hand and replace it with the horns which of course is awesome just like that then of course we have the rope and the cowbell now you can tie this onto here if you'd like to i kind of don't want to mess with the rope too too much um you can see that it's kind of like uh, frilled at the ends uh, do be careful you don't want this to unravel or untangle that's why i'm going to keep it mostly um uh, untouched but in the meantime it will look something like this if you were to tie it uh, to the bell otherwise if you want it to just be a rope you can easily just do this and have him holding it very nicely I think that looks awesome the way it is but there he is with some of the accessories on him now let's get to some comparisons and of course uh, the first comparison we are going to make is with his tag team partner Brody so there is Stan Hansen and Brody Bruiser Brody together very very nice now as you can see they scale very very nicely with each other uh, one thing I'm noticing is again I think the look of these ultra figures are a little more natural than the Mattel figures I also think they're a little more girthier uh, I can't really be too too sure but I think that 
I know Brody's a huge guy, but I think Stan Hansen might be a little more wider than some might like. Otherwise, he seems pretty, pretty uh, well scaled with your Mattel figures. Again, albeit maybe just a little too big in terms of just girthiness. Here he is next to Steve Austin. The angle here makes Austin look very, very short. And then, of course, uh, bringing a female wrestler, we'll bring an Alexa Bliss right there. Again, she looks very, very, very tiny compared. So that's it for Stan Hansen, and I must say I'm very, very impressed with this figure. I really love the size of him, and just the detail on like his torso and everything just looks super great. Likeness, of course, is awesome as well, and it's just nice to have a... A uh, very nice figure of Stan Hansen, especially uh, him and Brody here together as tag team champions. I think this is an awesome duo. If you don't get the whole set, these two are definitely at least worth... Uh, I forget, even forget how much they were. They were 40 or $45. But again, very, very high quality, nice figures. Oh, didn't mean to do that. But again, very, very nice. Uh, just like Brody, I'd give him around an 8 uh, eight or nine. He is very, very well put together. Um, I didn't mention it before, but his waist joint's a little bit nicer than Brody's. Um, again, like I said before, I kind of wish the articulation was just a little bit better. Uh, otherwise, it is very uh, more than serviceable. It is good. In fact, it's great. It's just not amazing, the articulation. And uh, everything else just kind of makes up for that. Uh, visually, he's just super nice. Sculpt, paint, everything. Uh, and I would definitely highly recommend him. Um, I should say, too, as these reviews come out, I'm eventually just going to do a full, just general review of Series 1. And we're just going to be going over uh, what I think of the set as a whole and uh, if I would recommend them all, so just look forward to that. Uh, keep following me if you want to see the rest of these figures in this line, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.